Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Bicycle Network's Top 10s of Bike Riding Phrases, Facts and Figures. I'm Craig Richards and I'm the CEO of Bicycle Network and last time we were very excited to look at the top 10 answers to the question of why bikes are the best transport solution. Today, following on from that, we're looking at the top 10 things to know about providing better places to ride. There's lots of technical information and detail about how do you build places to ride. Of course, the Crow Manual out of the Netherlands is the one everyone looks up to and still aspires to, even though it was originally done back in the 1970s. But we're not getting into the technicalities today. What we're looking at is the key things to know, the key phrases, the key facts, the key figures. So are you ready? Let's go. Let's start off with number 10. Places to ride should pass the 8 to 80 test. This test is simple, it's concrete, and it's emotional. We ask the question, would you let your 80 year old grandfather ride in this particular place? Would you let your 80 year old daughter ride in this particular place? When we ask this question and the answer is no, as we saw in that picture, it tells us that the place to ride we've provided is not of a standard that enables lots of people to ride their bikes. On to number nine, your bike commute is only as good as its worst piece of infrastructure. We hear the story so often of people who are riding along and suddenly the bike lane disappears. Now that's fine if you're on the strong and the fearless category and you're happy to ride your bike and occasionally move into the situation where you're heavily um, interacting with vehicles. But for a lot of people it's not and it stops people riding. It's so important that when we build places to ride, you can ride from end to end in comfort. On to number eight. The essence of bike riding is convenience. People won't park and walk or go out of their way. Often when we talk to people who are building places to ride and they say, they're just gonna have to do it. And we say, look, you've gotta be able to get from point A to point B. Bike riders, it's a surprise to many people. We're kinda of lazy. We just wanna be able to go straight from where we wanna to get to A to B. We don't wanna to have to deviate around. We don't wanna to have to park our bike a long way away. But when people provide those, sorts of facilities, we just know bike riders don't use them. On to number seven, keep it simple unless it's big, bold and beautiful. I love this picture, it's from Limburg in Belgium where they built this 200 metre incredible bike lane through a lake. They've done something bold, they've done something beautiful and you can just see the joy on people's faces as they ride through there. But most of the time we don't need incredible the difficult or innovative facilities. Stick to the basics, stick to the manuals and build the things that we know work. Number six, don't let perfect get in the way of better. Look at this bike lane here. It's not the best bike lane. It's not what we'd call gold standard, but it's still pretty good. It's better than nothing. And as bike riders, we always look to have the best we possibly can, but we do know at times we just have to say, hey, this is better than it was. So we take this, we say yes, we say thank you, we'd be appreciative to the people that provided it. But of course we know that we're gonna come back later and as we see in these sort of phones, we'll come back later, get a better bike lane, better protection, get it inside the vehicles. But it, sometimes we have to understand this is a game of progression. Number five, even though replacing car parking with bike lanes means more money for traders, some will always freak out. People on bikes, when they go shopping, they stay longer and there's also more people on bikes when there's better places for people to ride. It's enabled more space, which means more people can fit in. The studies are very clear. One of the classic examples happened on 9th Avenue in New York. They put in bike lanes, good bike facilities, and the takings of traders went up 49%. Despite this very clear evidence, we know that it will always be a thing that you have to convince the traders. You've got to get them on board. They're very worried about their livelihood, but we, we know the evidence is very clear to show that good bike facilities means more money for traders. Number four, houses near places to ride are worth more. A great study again done in the US showed that they took a number of cities through the, the US, a lot through the Midwest particularly, and when they said, what are the house prices for similar houses near bike paths or away from bike paths, and they found the houses near bike paths were worth nearly 40,000 more than the ones away from bike paths. So that's another great reason to provide better places to ride. On to number three. The truth about a city's aspirations 
isn't found in its vision, it's found in its budget. Brent Tadarian. We've seen lots of great plans, lots of great strategies that are built that show a world that's going to have a lot of bike lanes in it. But then we see no movement at all. We see a lot of promises that are unfulfilled. So you really need to look into the city's budget to see are they going to spend the money to fulfill those plans. But it's not enough to just look at the budget. There's another step as well. You actually have to look to see do they actually spend the money. We're littered with examples of promises made, budgets put in, but spending that doesn't actually happen. Number two, Amsterdam wasn't always Amsterdam. We all aspire to be like Amsterdam. All our cities, we aspire to have them like the Netherlands. And when we say to people, oh, we've got to be like Amsterdam, this is the response we often get. But the thing to remember is that back in the early 1970s, Amsterdam was a city like many cities currently are. It was a car-driven city. They changed, they made a key conscious decision in the 70s, and we know that the 70s is particularly the moment is most like what we see today. Back in the 70s, we had the oil crisis. We also had a social movement happening and some cities in Amsterdam was one seized on it and others, and we saw that in the US cities where their bike riding numbers went up and then they quickly went back down. So today is our chance. There's a great saying that when it comes to this, that we say, what's the best time to plant a tree? Of course, it was 50 years ago, but the second best time is today. We need to do that now. Now to our number one, our last one. It's not about the bike, it's about the people. And I apologise for using a phrase that was well known for Lance Armstrong and all the terrible things that he did, but we know that this is a real key. Places to ride is about livability. There's lots of components to that. If we just make it about the bike, we can end up in this bike versus car thing, which is very unproductive. What we should be saying is that bike places, places for people to ride, are one of the key components of livable places that we all need and all aspire to. So that brings us to the end of today's top 10, where we looked at the things to know about providing better places to ride. Please keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And I can't wait to join you again next time when we look at the top 10 answers for people who say bike riding is too hard. Look forward to seeing you soon.